I mean, my, my duty is to the novel. So my duty is to write the best novels I'm capable of writing and to to do them without cynicism, which is by which I mean not to try to guess what people want to read. You know, there's this there's this line early on in the book um, that says deep down they both knew that no one had the kind of friendship when they were 40 that the two of them had at 15. And um, I mean, I understand, you know, from this book and, the you know, the deep dive that you've done into this this female friendship over the years. Um, uh, what do you think is so special about a female adolescent friendship that kind of ma in markedly different in nature from say adult friendships or a male female friendship or a male male friendship well i mean i should start by saying my closest friend when i was adolescent was a boy who remains one of my closest friends yeah. so okay. so so i'm not going to say it, it's a lesser sort of thing um but i think what i would say about adolescent friendships is there is a real intensity in them you know i mean you don't want to when you're an adolescent you don't want to be dealing with adults you just want to be with your friends and your closest friend becomes a person who you have a level of interaction and communication with that is very rare in, in friendships later. I mean, you're in school the whole day together, you get home and, you know, when I was growing up, you would get on the phone and you're talking to each other. And, um, and now of course, you know, you, you can be um, texting and doing other things through the day. So I think it is that intensity and that feeling also that you are, becoming adults together and I think if you have to fee when it's with female friendship it's also about you know you are experiencing together the change from girlhood to womanhood right so you know as much as the book is about how uh, their friendship is kind of this this one common thread that runs through their life how would you say, you know, um, would you say it kind of lessens, just again, going back to that line that no one had the friendship when they were 40 or 14, do you feel it's a weakening in its energy or strength or simply that it kind of mutates into another kind of feeling? So I think when they're 14, they both think no one has a friendship at 40 like they do at right. 14. And they think in a way that means that from their 14 year old perspective, the friendships of adults are much weaker. I think by the time they're adults, what they realize is actually, a stronger friendship is one where you don't have to see each other every day and you don't have to talk about everything, right. but you know each other, you recognize each other's feelings, but you still remain friends. Right. Um, and that you know that you could go days, weeks, months, but if the other person needs you, you will be there in an instant. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yet, but I think they would also acknowledge that something of that intensity is gone. I mean, in, you know, it's, you're not the person who, shares everything right. with someone you know i mean um you have so you might have either your separate romantic life or you'll have your separate professional life which is very important to you and has nothing to do with the other person um so it's more that it, it stops it stops being so it stops being intense but it doesn't stop being strong it right. may get stronger even while getting less intense Right. And there's this one line where he tells Zara, you can't let politics get in the way of friendship. And, you know, apart from the line at the back of your, you know, proof copy that the 40 years of mm -hmm. friendship between them was just a lesson in the unknowability of other people. I feel this line is kind of the, you know, it, it distills the essence of the book. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, do you believe that? Do you think that politics don't, you know, you can't let politics get in the way of friendship as in, as Kamila Shamsi, the author, do you believe that? I don't think you can separate. I mean, and I think one of the things that 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 has happened in the world in the last few years is, is the number of people. I mean, I think in some countries you always knew that, but I think it's more evident that that politics is not something that happens in you know Parliament. Right. Um, years ago, I was I was doing a, a event at an American university, and someone asked me this question: "When you know, well, why do politics come so much into your novels?" Um, and I said, it's not like it comes in, it just, it's part of the fabric of life. And, and Zara certainly sees the ways in which it's not, uh, politics meant that when she was 14, she worried that her father would be arrested, you know. Um, so it's not, it's not in any way something that she knows how to separate out. What are the female friendships in, in fiction or in cinema that have really informed you or that have really made an impact on you? Um, as a reader and a writer? Is there something that stands out for you? It's a good question. I mean, you know, I love the Ferente novels, but but it's interesting to think that even while I was reading them, 
I thought I've read too many versions and hers was the best. And I mean, it's not actually, I'm not criticizing because I think she, it is an important story and one she tells very well. But I, I did feel, I read too many stories where it seems the heart of the relationship is jealousy or envy and then a love triangle. I do think something like Sex in the City, I remember when that came on, on our TVs and, and thinking, actually, isn't it nice that it's four women who are friends and and for all that there are these men in their lives and all that, their friendship is a proper friendship. The branches are more important than any of the dates, yes. Yeah, and yeah. when I was growing up, Gagney and Lacey, you know, TV drama with two women cops. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love that one as well. But right now, I've just been watching the new Amazon Prime, um, A League of Their Own mm -hmm. um, TV series. And that has a really beautiful friendship between um, these two women, Max and Clancy, which I thought, yeah, that's perfectly done. I feel one thing that tends to be common, though, is that they are very, they are opposite in nature. Um, was that something um, you were clear on when you were kind of building the characters of Mariam and Zara? I think there's a lot more dramatic potential in it. You right. know? I mean, that's where you're, where, where, because I, I knew, I always knew that what I wanted with the novel was to investigate the idea that, uh, particularly with childhood friends, that you become friends with people in childhood for reasons you don't remember. I mean, maybe you sat next to each other when you were four years old and, you know, adult friendships are based on, I think, shared interests, Yeah. maybe shared views of the world, whatever. Um, but the particular nature of childhood friendship is actually you can grow up to be people who are completely opposite. You can grow up to be people who, if you met as adults, you would never be friends. But was it was it hard to kind of plot a novel uh, whose, you know, narrative tension, I mean, even though it's about this friendship over a period of time, the narrative tension is primarily around this one evening, around this one event that changed their life and kind of leaves its repercussions over the next 30 years. So I'm, I'm very bad at plotting or, or it's something I don't really do beforehand. Um, so it's as I'm writing, it's, you know, I know some things about the novel, but a lot of it becomes clearer to me in the writing. Um, and for a while, it took me a while to figure out what the structure would be. So in the, in the earlier, there was an earlier draft where I actually write some of those middle years, um, right. you know, so them in their twenties, them in their thirties. Um, and it just wasn't working. And partly it was because it, that, that tension was slack that, you know, Jimmy didn't appear in those sections and there was just it sort of was what is this novel about we're spending all this time and then we come back you know decades later to jimmy and the, the first draft was a mess my first drafts are always messes do you also feel as a you know as a south asian writer writing for the world today do, do you also feel that it's you know it's a duty or it's your job to speak about these issues or you don't let those um that's not a burden on you it's just something you genuinely want to do I mean, my, my duty is to the novel. So my duty is to write the best novels I'm capable of writing and to to do them without cynicism, which is by which I mean, not to trying to guess what people want to read, you know, right. uh, but just to try and know what are the, what are the stories I'm interested in telling um, and to sort of sit down and, and do that. Uh, no, I don't think about things like duty, which is, really too heavy a word i mean a novel is pleasure and then you know if how is someone going to enjoy the novel and believe in it as a novel and enter into the lives of these characters if you as the writer are entering into it with a sense of you know what you must put in there because of your duty